Hey y'all, well, welcome back. We're out in the garage. Uh, things are coming along. Uh, we'll take a couple quick videos for you today. We started working on the project cart again. Um, a lot of stuff happening. We got Richie moved in across the uh, across the way. It's uh, what the fourth, fifth of fifth of January, something like that. Five days into the year, no snow in southeastern Lower Michigan. Um, I'm not going to complain. We don't get snow all year. And I'd be happy, but I know it's coming, and I know the freezing cold is coming. So um, we're just going to enjoy it while we got it. Um, it's still workable out there. So. We are we're working on the uh, the Emic chassis, uh, and and what we we did is uh, we're going to show you some things here, a couple tips, tricks. You guys that want to build your own chassis, uh, a lot of guys added add stiffness to the chassis by adding bars and clamps and uh, you know things that uh, tubes that bolt together and. And, and you know cross members and all kinds of stuff and I'll tell you if, if you know that the that the configuration the, the design is 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 workable um, there are far better ways to to tighten up or stiffen up certain areas of your of your cart and this is one of the ways of doing it because the cart's already built uh, we, we can't start from scratch. Um, we bought some uh, two pieces of uh, foot long uh, DOM, which is drawn over mandrel, which is the next best thing to chrome molly. Um, I wasn't going to order chrome molly uh, through the mail and then turn it down. This is one inch uh, DOM. It had an um, uh, eighth inch wall because we were going to have to turn it down to uh, about 925 thou outside diameter to fit inside this inch and, inch and eighth tubing. Uh, the chrome molly. So what we did is we had a crack in the frame. Remember when we were cleaning it up, we found a crack here. Uh, there's a little crack underneath here that's been welded already. And what we want to do is stiffen, stiffen this cart because we're going to put more horsepower on it. It had a reed jet on it. Um, it was a 45 inch wheel base. It was a good cart for, according to the guy that owned it. Um, and he says, you know, the best thing you could do is, is leave the tubing seat the tubular seat in it because it's going to stiffen it up. Stiff, stiff, stiff. He kept talking about stiff. This is going to stiffen this cart once we put uh, weld it all back together. Adding that DOM on the inside um, is going to stiffen it. And what we're going to do, we had to press it in there pretty good. Um, we first we drill. Uh, the the tubing goes, you know, to to here where those marks are on each side, past this cross tube. Um, so we first we drill with uh, we used a step drill. I'll show you. We used a step drill, and then uh, then we open it up. We flare it out because we're going to plug weld, and that's going to positively secure this DOM to the inside of the chrome molly. We may even do uh, two more, you know, on the bottom here, on either side. It, it depends on how I feel, but uh, I left these so you can see how we get started, and then how we flare it out, and then we're going to plug weld with the MIG welder. Now, um, I only left about an inch here because we're not sure what we're going to do with the wheelbase just yet. Okay, this is what we cut off. All right, this is exactly how it was when we cut it off. All right, um, it's, it's snug so it won't go on there yet. But, and uh, as you could see from uh, the old bearing hanger, you see, it actually sat about right here where and then it started to kick up you know with where the frame was and uh and that was your original 45 inch wheelbase but what we did was we uh we went ahead and cut some chrome molly uh and we we we're gonna slide them on here they're tight so i'm not gonna do it right now on the camera but um they're relatively tight so we will knock those back on and then we're gonna make plugs for the end of this aluminum chrome molly here in a drill press, we drill and tap some uh, 6061 T6 aluminum solid stock. We've already had it on a um, on a on a mill or a drill press or not, I'm sorry on a lathe. So we had the true centers are already in it. We drilled and tapped. We cut the head off a um, a grade eight 516 bolt. So we can go ahead and turn it right. And what we're going to do is this is one inch as well. 
Um, what we'll do is we'll do like we did in those other videos. We'll take a file and we'll machine the outside of that aluminum down because we don't have a lathe. And we'll get it to fit inside this curl molly that we're going to put on here, right? Then it'll be sticking out about this far, maybe a little less, about five-eighths of an inch out the end of that curl molly. And then we'll use that just to line this back up. We'll put the um, we'll put that uh, we'll put that cross tube in with the clamps, just to make sure um, you know these these here are uh, are straight side to side. We'll clamp that that uh, that stiffening tube in there just to make sure everything's square and straight before we weld it all together. But the reason I didn't do DOM all the way out through my three inch extension because we're gonna we're thinking about extending the wheelbase from 45 to 48 inches. Um, the reason I didn't do DOM all the way to the end is because originally I didn't I didn't intend to extend the wheelbase, um, but uh, you know the aluminum is really just to just to get the rear end of it all all you know square and straight with the rest of the the main frame rail that's there. Um, once we weld um, the bearing hangers here on, these are going to have to be they're a little wider first of all. Uh, front to back as you can see you know then this one here so they're, they're, we're gonna have to do a little bit of, of grinding or machining to this bottom edge you know because of that that main frame rail being you know half half round or have a radius on it like this one did you know so we'll have to do that we'll have to we'll have to fudge that in a little bit but that's okay just just to get the axle back to a position where it needs to be uh, before we weld it in to, to be, you know, a, a 48 inch wheelbase. Is 48 inches ideal? I don't know. Um, we, we've seen some 50 inch wheelbase stuff. Those carts are primarily twins, really Daytona only kind of carts. Um, the longer wheelbase helps you on, you know, would, would give you good stability on long, fast corners. You don't got a lot of long, fast corners at Daytona. I mean, on the, on the oval, you don't even, the cart doesn't even know it's going around a corner. You're not even really turning the steering wheel on the oval. Uh, through the infield, um, you know, it's Daytona, man. I mean, the start finish line's on the oval. You're going to give up whatever you need to give up through the infield. Uh, not that we're building this car uh, for or not for Daytona. It's more of a road course cart. Um, our original RPM chassis that we built were built at 45 inches. And we had a lot of... A lot of problems with those carts where they, they, they would unload about three quarters of the way through the corner. The chassis would all of a sudden unload and it would start to hop. And um, we tried a lot of different things to stiffen and, and loosen, uh, allow flexibility in certain places and tighten up others. So, uh, you know, that's just uh, just part of it. Uh, this, this inside tube deal, uh, if we were building this cart from brand new we wouldn't put these bars on the outside what i do and this is a this is a tip this is a trick it's a hot tip right here get out your notepad if you're happy if you build a chassis and you're testing you're a chassis guy and you're happy with the width of the waist of the cart you're happy with the length of the waist of the cart you're happy with all this stuff here but it just needs a little of this or a little of that what you do is you would take curl molly and you would insert it into these frame rails depending on if you wanted to stiffen up the front end or the waist or the rear end, you would put it in, in push it into sections of the tubing before you bent it. And then you wouldn't need to plug weld it. It'd already be in there. And I'm telling you, you think I'm nuts? There are, people have already been doing it. Um, specifically on dirt carts, which we know um, dirt guys, I think are the only ones really making money racing go-karts and big money at that. So, um, I got some dirt cart buddies, uh, obviously, that Ed McGlone has shared a bit of this with me, but we've been doing this. We've been, we've been jamming tubing into frame rails for a long time, and we just haven't told anybody because there was really no reason to. Not that I'm an old man, it doesn't really much matter. Um, these are ways, if you're going to build your own chassis and you've got money to burn, obviously, Crow Molly's not cheap. Bending it up, making a fixture to hold it so you can weld it, not cheap. If you can afford to build a cart and then go test it and find out what's wrong with it, then preload the, the frame rails with, uh, with different wall thickness uh, chrome molly before, before bending it, 
um, that that stiffens the cart and it's specific. You can literally just put a piece from here to here and then bend it and that will stiffen the rear half of this waist of the cart. Same with the, just this here without anything on the back. Want to tighten the whole thing front and back. Want to tighten the front or you want to preload. Have be able to preload one side and it stay preloaded, specifically dirt. You're going to want to put tubing in one side and not in the other. So there's a lot of other ways of going about stiffening up or getting the proper amount of flexibility or in our, this case non-flexibility uh, in a chassis without putting cross tubing and BS in. I mean, does it work? It might. Um, you know, the, these we know that these these blades and bars that, that sprint cart guys put in and some enduro guys as well. Um, does it work? Yeah, but look at the monstrosity you're going to. Uh, the, the the length you're going to just to get that that stiffness when you could if you knew what you were doing and you really tested like we do you'd be able to you'd be able to do this we didn't really test with our with our chassis we had an idea um, we we kind of copied Tom Bart's cart that he had originally built for us our first uh, lay down shifter cart and uh, changed some things which did, in my mind, make it better. We made the car narrower. First of all, the car was quite a bit narrower than Tom's car. Um, and that changes the dynamics. And um, if we'd have really been into it, we'd have been adding, uh, adding tubing and, and inside of, of frame rails and, and stiffening it up in different areas. And we'd have got that, that loading up and hopping business out of the way. But at that time, we didn't, you know, like we are now. We didn't have a ton of money, so we and we weren't going to build carts to sell them. We were just building them for ourselves. Um, if you're going to try to sell carts to people, um, you can't sell them an idea. And and then when you know they come to you and say, "Well, Robert, you sold me this go kart, and about three quarters of the way through a corner, it hops and unloads, and and, and it's violent." What, what do I tell them? Oh, gee, sorry. Drive it anyway. You know, keep your foot down. Drive harder. Um, they're going to want a, an answer how to fix it. So um, I guess that's why we never got into selling the carts. Because, you know, with go-karts, you, uh, you can't please all the people. Huh? And a lot of times you can't please anybody. So that's where we're at. We're out here playing around. I'm going to start machining up that uh, piece of aluminum with a file. Uh, you see the mark on there. We've got about two and five-eighths per side. So we'll machine the whole thing and use a, a, a caliper to check the outside diameter and make sure it's going to fit inside that chrome molly. And then uh, that's it. We'll get, we'll get it uh, snapped together and get you another quick look at it before we're done for the day. But um, shoulders coming along. I've been actually doing uh, the rehab here at home. Uh, they were only going to send me twice a week for six weeks, and I've been doing it literally every day until, unless I hurt myself, which I have. Sometimes I overdo it and it hurts. And, uh, and it'll get it'll get good and stiff the next day, so I'll take a day off. But uh, we're, we're doing it at least once a day. Um, we're doing uh, strength training with the rubber band, uh, all different types of movements with the rubber band. And then uh, after we get it good and warmed up with the rubber band and stuff, about half an hour of strength training, and uh, well, then we get into the stretching with the pulleys and stuff. And uh, it's coming along. I mean, you know, I, I can, I'm almost there. You know, I'm getting there. <laughs> It takes time. We were only about uh, a month and a week or so from having surgery, and a lot of people say it's going to take six months. Uh, I know this much. It's not going to stop me from driving a go-kart so, uh, or building one. So that's it, folks. Uh, we'll bring you some more later once we start getting things together. Uh, probably not going to do any welding today, but once we do, we'll go ahead and hit up all these little nicks and cuts uh, in the chassis where we are cutting things off and maybe where the spindles were banging there uh, we'll, we'll hit all that stuff up too and then do all of our metal finishing and everything uh, when we do all the rest of the welding so that's it for now from rpm headquarters uh, god bless godspeed y'all we're praying for everybody out there uh, we hope to get the, our go-kart in the garage next weekend and uh, or this coming weekend and, and be able to start working on the new uh, radiator and getting some extra cooling to that thing and finally getting to a point where it, it's it runs so cold we've got to tape things down and we've never had that problem and that's the problem we want to have the same problem that the uh that the cik guys have so that's it that's all for from rpm headquarters we'll bring you some more in a bit the yeah, looking good
Talk to you all soon.